Hi, and welcome to the Pulse Shift News. Guys, just sitting here having morning coffee, um, just about to start the day. And, you know, you, I'm one of these people that, you know, um, have these deep thoughts in the morning. And I was just thinking about complacency. You know, how easy is it uh, in this day and age to put large things aside and just get on with your daily life? Because we have to, don't we? Um, you know, we have to put food on the table, the electricity has to be paid, the rent has to be paid, etc. And, you know, even though there are larger events occurring, we have to just slide them slightly aside in order to get on with just an ordinary day in our lives. But, um, you know, I was thinking about complacency and, you know, how complacent are we with regards to the magnetic pole shift, for instance? How easy can we push this big event aside and just get on with our daily lives? Just to put it into perspective, you know, this... It, uh, humans haven't experienced this uh, magnetic pole shift before in their lives. They haven't got recorded data of this. You know, this is an unrecorded event and an anomaly that is taking place in our lives. Another one is the grand solar minimum, and I think we're talking more than a grand solar minimum with this. Uh, you know, all the facts aren't in yet, but clearly when you look at you know, just like we are right now, the last three solar cycles, you can see that there is definitely something going on. You know, the uh, cycles are disappearing uh, of sunspots exponentially. And, you know, it's easy to, you know, just forecast the trend of what's going to take place with regards to this. And for some people that are talking about the topic of Grand Solar Minimum, they're probably uh, saying, you know, it's an event that could last, you know, 20 years, 30 years, maybe. And, you know, what are the repercussions of just this alone? If we just, you know, concentrate on grand solar minimum and slide the magnetic pole shift to the side and just concentrate on this. Well, firstly, from what I can see, and not many people do show it, um, if you look at the uh, last glacial period um, and compare solar activity uh, over the last 12,000 years, since the last glacial period you'll see that solar activity as like these three solar cycles that we're looking at uh, dropped off in a trend that you could predict is going to continue so you know with people talking about the grand solar minimum uh, and the fact that it could last you know uh, even 50 years like the Maunder minimum did uh, or maybe even uh, you know a couple of years tens of years like the Dalton minimum I think if we go on the grand uh, record of things uh, with regards to glacial and interglacial periods, you'll see that we are expected to go back into a glacial period. And the problem is with glacial periods is that they don't last 50 years, they last thousands of years. And, you know, as a human, uh, at this point in time, you know, all of us, you know, face dramatic changes from this point on. It's like, Every time we leave our front door, there is something there, you know, so it could be, you know, just for argument's sake, somebody standing there, but we don't see them because uh, we've got complacent about it. You know, it's, we've got used to seeing them, but it is really like that. You know, there is somebody standing at our door and that there could be two people in this case standing at our door. One could be the pole shift and the other one could be uh, the coming probably possible, which is m more likely, I think, than the grand solar minimum another return to a glacial period. How will that affect us? Well, during the last glacial period, most of the northern hemisphere of this earth was covered in uh, sub-zero temperatures, snow and ice. Um, you know, most of Europe, um, the UK, right down to, you know, uh, central England, uh, and right over Canada, and, you know, down into probably mid-America, so, you know, it is something that's going to uh, be affecting the majority of the population of this planet. And, you know, you just start to think of some of the other things that come into play with this. You know, the fact that we've got a lot more technology in this day and age, which is subject to hindrance by, you know, these sub zero temperatures. There is more people on this planet now than there ever has been. And the demands. Uh, globally for food production 
energy production and you know the fact that we all need to participate in a monetary system in order to get what we need to bring home to our little families all is you know likely to be affected you know when the weather changes and it's it's you know when you start to think about it the implications that we're going to be facing in the in the not too distant future we're starting to see these changes already you know are going to be massive and they are going to affect us all and you know i just hope that sometimes you know some of you guys out there that haven't put up any provisions you haven't took out those little insurances for your family with regards to you know a little bit of food um, some uh, skills that you might need uh, to go back to you know those primitive skills like a little bit of hunting and gathering knowing in your local area where you can get things throughout the year so it's not just like you know that um, you might know that a few fruit trees are producing fruits at a specific point of the year but what about the rest of the year and I think a good example is if we look to some of these eastern countries how they preserve food and how they still live you know even you know um, in countries like uh, Latvia, Lithuania, um, and so, you know those 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 countries where you know a lot of grandparents are still putting up uh, preserves. Uh, they've still got it in the system. Uh, they haven't quite grew out of it or evolved out of it. You know, and they they do. You know, the the, the young ones go around to the grandparents and grandma's still you know in the kitchen preserving uh, probably wild mushrooms or you know um, jams and things like that or tomatoes in in the natural way that it's been done for probably a thousand years but you know those skills probably are important to us now more than ever you know i think our schools especially in these western societies you know all europe you know all these modern countries haven't done us any justice by not teaching us those basic uh, skills of independence because you know if we have a grand solar minimum uh, continue uh, and also go into a glacial period everything's going to change our society is going to change um, you know f factories could close uh, cities could just uh, become stagnated that much that people don't want to live in them anymore because they're, they're just not sustainable environments unless you have the logistics of everything else supporting them and you just think about it how much has to go into a city to supply the uh, residents within it none of these residents uh, have you know large enough uh, pieces of land or gardens to keep themselves going throughout the year and not only that, uh, they don't have the skills, even if they did. I mean, you could give, um, you know, somebody that has no experience of growing their own food, all the seeds uh, you want in the world. If they haven't got a clue of how to look after a simple plant, then, you know, they're not going to be successful in growing anything at all. And, you know, have you ever tried it? You know, I mean, not many people have. I had a little bit of uh, my garden, uh, one of the properties, I sectioned off to grow some food. And one of the things I wanted to grow uh, was wheat. So I cornered off a little area to grow some wheat. Uh, I just wanted to see uh, how easy it was to do that. And I, you'll like this, guys, I think. I, I grew the wheat and then I brought a wheat grinder, one of these little small ones that you put in the... Uh, kitchen you clamp it to the work surface and I grounded up all the flour uh, sorry you know I grounded up all the wheat into flour and I made a loaf of bread out of it and I mean probably there was probably 10 square meters of corn and it managed to make a small loaf of bread and <laughs> but one of the good things I did remember out of all this is that you know I didn't put that many corn seeds in the ground uh, wheat seeds sorry in the ground to get that <coughs> excuse me to get that quantity back uh, the return on wheat seeds to the amount you get back I think is about 37 to 1 so you put one wheat seed in you get 37 back um, but it was a nice experience but I tried growing potatoes and we had all sorts of problems uh, in growing you know potatoes carrots onions and it was pests uh, that ate them you know we didn't put any 
fertilizers on there i wasn't aware of any natural fertilizers or you know i wasn't skilled in gardening because a lot of gardeners would mix uh, different things in with the potatoes and it would keep away some of the pests naturally but i didn't have those skills so i just you know went out there and uh, uh, did it and a lot of the potatoes we had to cut pieces off them because they've got what's called wireworm uh, you know like a, a a germ or something uh, and it destroyed part of the potato probably three percent out of a hundred percent of the potatoes was good straight away you could eat them uh, if you cleaned them up and that but uh, the majority of them had been attacked by this wireworm and uh, carrots were the same as well uh, carrots were pretty easy and they looked after themselves but then you had the pests within the grain that was eating them so you know that was another problem um, I grew onions, uh, you know, uh, runner beans were dead easy so long as you had the trellis to grow them up. Uh, that was a good, another good one as well. You know, for one, one seed, you got quite a good return back on those. But you know, you know what I'm saying here, guys, is that people don't give it a go these days, and you know, you, you, you're going to fail if you've never done it before. It's not something uh, you can learn overnight. Uh, growing there's lots of little tips uh, on how to do it better all the time and you know if you go down these allotments there's a lot of people that will share uh, this valid uh, resource of you know information with you and you know I just encourage every, anyone especially now we're at this point in time uh, to do get involved in these things you know try try hunter gathering see if you can catch uh, pigeons and um, you know wild birds that you can eat uh, I don't I don't um, I'm not saying to everyone you know go out there and you know destroy the diversity of uh, animals in your local community you know just so that you can you know brush up on your skills but you know look, at least look into how uh, some of these indigenous tribes still go about hunting and gathering for their people and how they prepare the food <clears throat> it's um you know a skill worth having especially at this time uh, when we're all taking all this into, you know, um, grant, you know, we're taking it all for granted at the moment, and you know we're being complacent. Um, you know, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I think you know the important uh, messages in this video is, you know, try and get yourselves um, some education on to, uh, you know, get yourselves a plan get yourself some uh, equipment you know to start thinking about that insurance policy for you and your loved ones that's that's the main thing because although we can put it to the side what's going on with the grand solar minimum and you know the coming glacial period uh, which is in my view inevitable uh, you know that we could be seeing changes not too far away how far probably five to seven years away uh, looking at especially what's going on with the magnetic pole right now and that intensity over Canada, you know, reducing at the rate it is. When it does go, the poles are going to go with it. It's clear as that, guys. We're going to see rapid pole movement and, you know, possibly the reversal from that point on. So we could be less than a decade away from all this happening. And, you know, if what's been taking place over the last hundred years, gradually, you know, changes that have affected our climate you know okay we've had a little bit of time uh, uh, to adjust to it but during this magnetic pole re reversal at that point you know we won't have no time uh, things are going to get a lot worse and you know it's probably at that point in time when everything is going to uh, you know turn out really bad for a lot of people from that point on you've just got to you know think about it for a few minutes so you know try not to be too complacent about these things you know if you remember every time you leave your front door there's two people standing there with signs in their hands one is you know holding up a sign saying you know the sun activity is at an all-time low has been for the last 11,000 years and it looks like we're going into another glacial period and then there's the other guy holding up the sign saying you know it's a pole shift you know it's time probably now to start you know taking some precautions for you and your loved ones because it doesn't make no difference whatsoever the world governments cannot uh, help everybody in this world with regards to that and probably they couldn't even help five percent out of the hundred percent that area right now so it's going to be you guys so you know if you can just put in the back of your mind every time you leave your front door 
there are two guys holding these signs magnetic reversal and grand solar minimum and you know start you know putting up for your uh, little insurance plans for your family because these things are happening okay guys i'm gonna leave it here um you know big thanks to those that have been supporting the video we've had a great quarter so far this year uh, with regards to what we've done you know we've got these magnetometers which are we're just waiting on the battery carriers we've got the batteries uh they're all programmed and built we're just waiting on the battery carriers now can you believe it and still two magnet three magnetometers to come to finish off the two we've got a spare one as well um and uh you know we can get them out to the people that we want them to go to uh, and you know get more data back in on these anomalies that are taking place you know we don't just talk about it on this channel guys we're an observatory uh, you know we've successfully collected data for over 18 months now on the trimac and the magnetosphere sensor another nine months and the our next step is going international with our magnetometers and collecting data from them uh, points as well and of course it's all really laid honestly onto the website so that everyone can see what's going on and how fast it's moving and uh, you know if you want to get on board and support that you know you can do it by the paypal link or the patron and I have noticed guys and probably if you've visited the patreon account it we seem to have come to a halt um, at the number of people but you know if you just put it into perspective we've got probably 146 patrons at the moment uh, but when you consider we've got 20,000 subscribers now uh, I'm still thinking that there could be a few more people out there that can help us so I understand it's not for everyone patron but maybe PayPal is so you know they're both there and you know your money that you donate to this does go back into giving you something back out of it and if I've promised everyone that's uh, donated something that you know once we get these magnetometers out we'll finish the cloud generator and then we'll move on to that next uh, project which is the laser and you know you're going to get your little message sent out into the stars and that's a promise that I've given everybody that's um, going to help uh, you know the observatory at the moment so um, enjoy your day guys and enjoy your coffee and you know I hope you got something out of this video and I'll catch up with you in a couple of days when we're going to uh, take out the SD cards out of our equipment and um, you know get that data up onto the website and we'll have a little talk about you know what if there's anything new there so guys um, you know the links are down there I'll say nothing more than what I usually do bye for now